Hey, happy Monday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. And I'm gonna give you an update on this extreme pattern. We come in with these cold temperatures and they are still staying till May. And it is bringing us on an extreme pattern, guys. This is going all the way down to the south and the southeast. And this is actually putting us on a very extreme positive PNA, which is gonna bring not only the cold temperatures down, but it's bringing a pretty massive storm. So I'm gonna update everything that you need to know about this storm, as well as these temperatures pushing through, because it is still coming all the way to May, and I see all the fear factor is pushing out there, and it hasn't even changed much. So let me show you what you can expect. And make sure you subscribe, because I did update you on this. I was the first one to talk about this two weeks ago, and I did do an update on it about six days ago, guys. And when I talked about the storm on Friday with the cold blast coming through, it didn't get a lot of people checking it out, so that's why I didn't make a video on Sunday. I just spend time with the family. But make sure you subscribe because you will hear these stories first from me. Believe that. So here's your shot here again this morning. How are y'all liking <laughs> them cold temperatures this morning? And you can see as it swings through that it comes back again. And the deepest has always been the 28th and the 29th. And that's when it comes down and we get that little cutoff upper level low all the way to the south and the southeast. And the freezing temperature stays, of course, to the upper Midwest. This isn't going all the way to the south. You see how it stretches through for the 29th for its deepest, but then that's it. So when somebody tells you you're going to have freezing temperatures coming to the south, just click off. They're just lying. It's not true. It never showed that happening. But this is sticking around for the rest of April, even the first week of May. After that, we're going to be in the 40s for the lows, morning lows, and it's going to be a big warm-up. And you can see from your Pacific North American pattern, your PNA, in this negative pattern right now, but we're going into this big, extreme, positive pattern, just like I showed you in the beginning of the video. Then after that, if we go towards the middle after the first week of May, it's going to go back to a negative pattern, which means your cold air is about to come from the West Coast to the center of the U.S. to the East Coast, and then it's going to go back to the West Coast. And you can see this here, when you have a positive PNA, you have all the warmer temperatures, you have that big ridge forming, and then it comes down to the trough with the cooler weather coming to the center of the East Coast. That is a positive PNA. A negative PNA is the exact opposite. And you can see this from Euro, when you look way up in the atmosphere, you can see your jet stream bends all the way down, you still have this blocking pattern, and it brings this stream all the way to the south and southeast. A very high ridge and a very low trough coming on the east coast and that is your positive pna and it is going to wind up and take days for it to form up this big system that's going to form up over the east side of the u.s and that is bringing a lot of potential severe weather plus a lot of intense flooding and you can see this on your vorticity so as it goes into that very extreme pattern you get this strong system forming up over the u.s while you get these warm temperatures going all the way up towards canada and it strengthens and forms up right over the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes. And when you look at all the ensembles of the Euro, you can see that they all agree that this system is going to form up nice and strong right over the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes going towards the Northeast. A very big system. And this is going to take a while for this to build, guys. So as you go from Wednesday all the way till Friday, you start getting these storms go over the south, the southeast, and it goes right up the East Coast while you get these surface lows forming up. So you still have multiple low pressures building up, but the one in the South is one you want to pay attention to. This one on the East Coast is pushing to the East. It's not going to the Northeast. The one from the South gets together in the Ohio Valley and becomes a strong system all the way down to a 987 millibar pressure, guys. A very big and broad system coming from the Ohio Valley all the way to the Northeast. And it's gonna start in the South and the Southeast as we go in this dip on the 29th. And not only your freezing temperatures, I will show your freezing temperatures, because like I said weeks ago, this could hurt your vegetation of your crops a little bit, but it's not a lot of freezing temperatures. It's gonna be some cold wind chills, but I will show you that the temperatures are not as extreme as people are telling you guys. This is gonna bring a lot of rainfall. As you go from the Wednesday, Thursday through Friday, is bringing a lot of rainfall from the south to the southeast. Then as it goes up to the northeast, is bringing a whole bunch of precipitation. 
a big area getting two inches of rainfall. This is going to be a lot. You also can see it is bringing some winds. Also, that cutoff low that's coming to the south is bringing winds as well. So you see you have the system up Midwest. This is bringing some snowfall. It's bringing some to Colorado as well. That's typical. Colorado gets a lot of their snowfall in March and April in Denver. I'm sorry to say this is really going all around you. But you can see that cutoff low is bringing a lot of winds with it as well as it goes up to the northeast and becomes one system. And maybe after that, go towards the northeast and bring some strong winds as well. So I will update you on that. Now, starting tomorrow, this is bringing some severe weather, guys. You do have chances for wind. You have chances for hail, even significant hail right here in Texas. That means two inches are greater in diameter, but it is bringing a tornado threat, a 2% in the green and a 5% in the brown. This is for Tuesday. And here's your cities and states at risk. And you can see here from National Weather Service, severe thunderstorms will be possible mainly over parts of Texas on Tuesday with a risk of damaging wind gusts, large hail, and perhaps a tornado. Then as you go through Wednesday, before this carries over towards the southeast and goes up to the northeast, this is where your more severe weather is going to happen for Wednesday. So you have a 5% and you have a 15% chance for severe weather for Wednesday. And here's your cities and states at risk. And you can see here from National Weather Service, scattered storms may produce large hail and damage and gusts over much of the central into northern Texas on Wednesday. Isolated severe storms producing hail may also occur over the Florida Peninsula. Now I'm going to update you on these temperatures so you know what to expect, what is truly coming your way, guys. So you can see with your AL, your Arctic Oscillation, that you still have this dip lasting all the way until the beginning of May. So those cold temperatures will hang around. But remember, after this positive PNA pattern, we're going into a negative PNA pattern. So this is not coming to the south and the southeast with freezing temperatures. Anyone that tells you that is lying, guys. And you can see here with the long range with the year old, the EPS, to after this cold dip all the way to the beginning of May, that that cold dip is not coming back down for the rest of May, guys. We are going to be maybe in the 40s for your, your lowest temperatures for some people, but it's going to be warm the rest of the day all the way into Canada. And you can see this this morning from the temperature. So you have your freeze warnings and your winter weather advisories. So a lot of y'all are really feeling these cold temperatures. And this is as far south as it's going, guys. It's not going any further than this. And you can see your temperatures for this morning. So a lot of people woke up in freezing temperatures. I'm over in Milwaukee. I can concur. It is very cold. It is in the low 30s. And everyone else is in the 40s. And that's about as cold as it's going to get. Maybe a little bit colder. But with your wind chills, Ohio Valley, you're not in freezing temperatures. But you are feeling like you're in the 20s with that wind chill this morning. But it is going to warm right back up today, guys. Your highs are going to be in the 40s. Matter of fact, these high 40s right here is what you can expect for your lows as we go through the beginning of May. But you see how it warms right back up today for everyone. Now, as you go through tomorrow, it's going to dip in again. You're going to wake up with these morning lows, very cold temperatures, all the way to the intercoastal northeast, feeling freezing conditions. Also, the Rocky Mountains going towards the west coast. And the highs for tomorrow is coming right back. It's going to bounce right back into these warm temperatures, and it's going to be in the 40s up here where you was freezing in the waking up. So it is going to be okay, guys. Now, as you go through Wednesday, as you have that severe weather in the south, you're going to wake up with freezing temperatures once again in all of this blue. Everybody else is waking up in the 40s, and you can see your highs for Wednesday. It is going to warm right back up. These are not your highs for the day, guys. These are your highs, not the freezing conditions. Thursday is going to move over a little bit more. Now it's going to be hitting this area with the freezing conditions before it moves away. And you can see your highs for the day. It is going to warm right back up, guys. Now once you go to Friday, the freezing conditions in the morning is going to be over the Rocky Mountains. And it is going to warm right back up for Friday. We're all going to be in your 40s. So it's not going to stay too long. As you go through Saturday, this is where it dips in a little bit. This is the 29th. This is the furthest that the dip comes in. This is right before our big storm, guys. So you're going to wake up in the morning with your cold temperature. So it is going to hang around all the way until Friday morning. And then your highs for Friday <laughs> is going to pop right back up. You don't have to worry about that sticking around. But now the southwest 
Now your highs are starting to get towards the 90s and the 100s, where the warm temperatures really are kicking in. Now, when you go all the way through Sunday, some people will wake up in some freezing conditions. We see the temperatures of your morning lows. A lot of it is in the 40s, and it is going to raise right back up for Sunday for your morning highs. So it's still going to stay very hot for the southwest, and everybody is warming back up. These cold temperatures are not sticking around. And here's your morning lows on Monday again. So you have it for northern Minnesota. You have it for the Dakotas, a little bit for the Rocky Mountains, a little bit for the northwest. You're going to wake up with some freezing conditions where everybody's still in the 40s, guys. And it is going to warm right back up on Monday again. Everybody's on a big warm-up. Up Midwest, you're still going to be in the high 30s to the 40s for your highs. So it's not going to be too bad. I'm here in Milwaukee. 40s actually feels good, guys, believe it or not. We have different humidity than down here in the south. I'm from the south, and when it's 40 degrees, you really feel it to the bones down there. Up here, you really don't feel it because the humidity difference. Now, Tuesday is when it's starting to go back to that negative PNA, and all these cold temperatures are going back to the west side of the U.S. You see how it's just a little bit of maybe a small area of freezing conditions. Everybody else is waking up in the morning in high 30s and 40s. And it is going to happen again on Wednesday on the 3rd of May. Everybody's still waking up in the 40s. So that big dip coming all the way down. Remember, this is not going to be freezing conditions for y'all. Your plants will be okay. Maybe put a sheet over them for the cold air, but there's no freezing temperatures. So as you go through the beginning of May, this is your morning lows. And you can see this also on the CFS, Climate Forecast System. So as you go through the 2nd and 3rd of May, you're going to wake up in the morning lows of the 40s. And that's about it as far as this Arctic blast is coming. And when you go to the 6th, you can see how it transitions. Your cold temperatures go to the west side of the U.S. While everybody is back on that nice spring warm-up. And then as you go through the 8th of the month, your morning lows, the next coldest chance of getting on the West Coast because you're going to be on the negative PNA, and you're going to wake up maybe in the high 30s to 40s again for the northern tier of the U.S. This is about normal, guys, and you're going to be very warm in the South. But once again, you can see the big warm-up throughout the day, so them temperatures are not going to stick around. It is going to be a huge warm-up all the way into Canada. But prepare yourself because it is going to be a gradual swing. As you go through the middle of May, northern tier is going to wake up in the 40s. Southern tier is going to be a lot warmer. And your highs for the day are just unbelievable all the way up into Canada. So just be patient, guys. These cold temperatures are not too bad. They're not sticking too long. They're not going too deep with the frozen temperatures. And you are warming back up. And you're still getting that snowstorm coming through for Colorado Tuesday and Wednesday, bringing a lot of snow. But still, Denver, it is going all around you. This is going to be for the higher elevations only. And you can see this with the Euro. It is bringing a lot of snow to Colorado. But Denver, you're getting a very little bit. Maybe in the next five days, you might get an inch. But that is going to be a lot of wet snow. It's pretty much going to be novelty flakes. It's going to be for the higher elevations only. So Colorado Springs, you could see a little over a foot of snow. But we do have our winner that we got to pick for today. David Cornett, congratulations. You are the winner of the Solar Weather Station. Make sure you contact me at this email, weathermanplustoday at gmail.com. That way I can get your address and ship it to you. Weatherman. Can't get no simpler than that. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. God bless you and your family, David. And remember, everybody, we are giving away another one for tomorrow. And if you've never been here before, I've been giving away these weather stations. Accurite is celebrating 80 years. Updates your wins every 17 seconds. Connects to National Weather Service and weather on the ground. Very easy to install. Your pole or a fence, put it anywhere that you want, guys. So I will be giving away another one for tomorrow. But thank you so much for your time. Most of all, I appreciate that, especially as busy as we all are these days. Let me know if you want an update on this storm system. It is going to be a strengthening storm. I think that is going to be pretty serious. Cold temperatures coming with it, but as you can see, they're not as extreme as others are saying. So God bless you and your families, especially those that are wondering if you're getting southern snow or southern freeze. You're not. It's not happening. I'm sorry you hear that. I'll tell you the truth on every video. I will update you again for tomorrow. For today, 
I want to talk to you about Revelation 21, 3 through 8. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Amen. Have a great Monday, everybody. I hope you're liking <laughs> these cold temperatures. You should be all fine. I'm sure everyone was pretty prepared for it. You see how it is going to be hanging around for a little while, but it's not super extreme. And make sure you hit that like button if you want to update on this story. That way it lets me know that you want an update and not to go on another family break. <laughs> all glory always goes to God. Our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I pray he always gives y'all wisdom and gives you knowledge on what you should do so you can see what's true and what's not. God bless you all and keep you all very safe at all times. That's the best thing. Plus peace in your heart. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Happy Monday, everybody.